This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now another Proudly We Hail. One of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. A story of seafaring men, eh, Conrad? Yes, Ken. Our play is a strange tale of the sea entitled The Wanderer. I believe it'll make for excellent listening. Our first act will begin in just a moment after this short but very important message. Air Force enlistments have been restricted for a long time, but they're open again now. The Air Force needs specialists in radar, radio, weather, aircraft maintenance, and numerous other technical fields. Yes, the Air Force can train you for one of its many technical jobs. Go to the nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with a recruiting sergeant. Find out for yourself the advantages you can gain by enlisting in the Air Force today. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Cole McDonald, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of The Wanderer. From out of the sea and from out of the men who follow it have come tales both strange and unexplainable. Tales that bear a timelessness like the inevitable and constant surf that forever beats against a million miles of shore. This is such a tale, one you will be left to fathom the deeps of yourself. My name's Cole McDonald. The sea is my mistress. Like all who follow her, she's in my blood. I follow her from ocean to ocean, port to port. And the things that happen to a man in the following are the things that make him or break him. It was on a night just such as this, in a port that bore the same sounds and smells, the same swirling fog, the dim lights and the wetness, and I making my way back to the ship after a glass or two, that I first met the wanderer. I beg your pardon, sir. Hmm? Uh, who is it? What do you want? I mean no harm, sir. <laughs> and you're a sensible man. Who are you? My name is... is Carl. Your ship. She is the Sparrow. Yeah, how'd you know that? I overheard you talking to the man in the bar. All right, so she's the Sparrow. What about it? I... I would like to sail on her. I am first class wife. I have papers here. Sorry, matey. We got a full crew. Where's your own ship? She left without me, sir. I was sick. <laughs> you mean drunk, huh? Well, maybe a little bit. You know how it goes sometimes. Yeah, yeah, well, that's tough. Even if we could use you, I'm only the first mate. Captain does the hiring. Oh, I see. The captain of your ship. Who is he? Captain Anders. Does he wear a beard? A short man, square, with small eyes, pale blue? A scar running from forehead to jaw? <laughs> hey, who is he? Your brother? That's him, all right. No, sir, he's not my brother. I sailed with him once. The name was familiar. Well, if you know him, come along back to the ship with me. He's aboard. Maybe he'll find a place for you. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Huh? Hey. Hey, 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 you! <laughs> he was gone into the fog-riddled night as suddenly as he'd come out of it. A big man, taller than my own six feet. In the darkness, I had not been able to see his face clearly, but I felt the strength of him and the sound of his voice. Nor was his voice that of an ordinary wiper. But then the sea plays no favorites. The way a man talks is of no consequence to her. And I pulled the collar of my pea jacket up around my throat and made my way back to the ship. Mr. McDonald, 
Station. Yes, sir. Come in and join me. It wasn't hard to tell or smell that the captain had been hard at it. When he was like that, a man had to steer close to the wind, keep his temper battened down. Captain Anders Sober was a surly, unfriendly, but efficient master. He was a good sailor. You couldn't take that from him. Drunk, he was loud, argumentative, insulting, and generally nasty. There was something down deep, locked within, eating at the man. Every now and again, I'd catch a glimpse of the torture in his eyes, and it was no pretty thing to see. The lady had been taken to the bottle with a rather monotonous frequency. Step into my cabin, Mr. May. Step in and have a drink with your captain. Sit down. Rest easy. Uh, how were things ashore tonight? Like always, sir. Like always. <laughs> yes, like always. Nothing changes outside. <laughs> it's only within. Here, throw this down your hatch. <laughs> we have our sailing order. We're putting out from the morning tide. Good enough. My health, sir. My health? <laughs> yeah, my health. My health, by all means. Not so good, you know. <laughs> Cancer. <laughs> oh, no, no, not the kind you think. <laughs> not that kind. <laughs> no cure either. No cure on this earth, on the sea, in this port, or any port. No cure on me! <laughs> but it deadens the sense. It's all a man can expect. It deadens the sense. Die. Why are you looking at me like that for, Mr. Mate? I I don't follow you too well, sir. You know, hey? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't believe that. I think you follow me very well. <laughs> yes, yeah, smooth one, MacDonald. <laughs> you don't show much. No, you don't show much, but I can see you notice. <laughs> and you think. <laughs> You think, McDowell? <laughs> Did you get drunk tonight, McDonald? You don't look drunk to me. No, I, I didn't get drunk, sir. Well, what did you do then? Have you a pretty girl ashore? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, then why go ashore? <laughs> you did not. <laughs> you went ashore and you did not. <laughs> On the way back to the ship, I, I met a man who said he'd sail with you. No, you don't tell me. A small world, eh, Mr. Mate? <laughs> and who was this fine fellow? <laughs> Why didn't you bring him aboard for a drink? Well, I don't know who he was. He said his name was Carl. I think he was Danish like you. He, he... What? What? Oh, what's the matter, sir? You. You. Get out of here. Get out of here before I kill you. Hey, easy, you. You think you're smart. Get out. Get out. Night, sir. We were three days out when I met the wanderer again. I would have forgotten him completely had it not been for the scene I'd had with the captain that last night in port. The captain made no further mention of it. He was sober, unfriendly, and withdrawn, and I and I was curious. At that mention of a man's name and his nationality, why had the captain turned into a madman with terror-filled eyes. Why? Uh, beg pardon, sir. Yeah, what is it, Black? Uh, sir, we got a stowaway on board. Found him in the after hole. Said he wanted to see you, what? sir. What? Where is he? Well, they're bringing him up now, sir. Well, of all the... Who the devil is he? I don't know, sir. Said he wouldn't talk to no one but you. Swanson, take over. Come along. Stowaway. As if I didn't have enough to... It was the same man who'd stopped me on the docks. Now in the light on the heaving deck of the ship... He looked like a throwback to the Viking days. Unconquerable was the word that found itself through my anger. You got anything to say? I had to come aboard, sir. What for? What's so appealing about this tub? It's where you're bound, sir. Copenhagen. There was no other way. Well, maybe you'll work your way to Copenhagen like you never worked before. When we get there, the authorities can decide what to do with you. The captain's going to love this. Yes. Yes, sir. He'll love it. Mr. Arsenal, what's going on down there? Eh, hey, we got a stowaway here, sir. What? Put it on there. Listen, you may have sailed with him, but if I were you, I wouldn't say anything out of turn. I don't think it'll be necessary, sir. I'll have no stowaways aboard my ship. We'll put him. Don't leave a 
No. No, it can't be. You. Oh, did he forgot? A long time. A long, long time. Take him below. Put him in arms. Get him out of here. Get him away from me. Put him in arms, sir. What charge? A charge. Well, that's the charge. Now get him out of my sight. Hello. Good evening, sir. Kind of cramped in this cubby, isn't it? Not much of a prison. I don't mind, Mr. McDonald. You weren't kidding when you said you knew the captain. No, no, I wasn't kidding. Look, I, I don't like holding you like this. Would, would you care to tell me what it's all about? For a long time now, I have been a wanderer on the face of the earth. I have gone from port to port, ship to ship, always seeking, always looking. For one man in the haystack of the world. It's been a long pilgrimage, but now it's over. I have found him. He said you were a murderer. What about it? He knows the truth of that statement. Why should I bother to deny it? Well, can you prove it? I won't have to. Mr. McDonald, sometimes words are useless. Sometimes all the words have been said. What lies between your captain and myself came out of words and the feelings that produced them. Feelings that were too strong to die even after the words were lost echoes in the mind. You didn't stow away to get to Copenhagen, did you? That should be obvious now, don't you think? Yes. What of the captain? He hasn't come out of his cabin since you met. He's drunk. Dead drunk. There's no place left to hide. And no place in his brain where he can go to forget. You feel sorry for him? No. I am driven by something stronger. Revenge? He did something to you? A promise. A promise that will not let me rest. Mr. McDonald! Mr. McDonald, a second wants you on the bridge. Heck, I've, I've got to go. We'll talk more later. Maybe you'll tell me what it's all about. Thank you for your concern, Mr. McDonald. We didn't talk more later, as you'd expect. When I got up to the bridge, I found the second was worried about the captain. For the sake of the well-being of the ship, I couldn't blame him. I don't like it, Mac. It's getting the men on edge. Yeah, you got any suggestions? Well, let's go in and quiet him down. If he happens to be captain of the ship, you want to risk a court of inquiry because he's got a belly full? He's had his belly full for the past two days. Well, that's his right. As long as he doesn't interfere with the running of the ship, he can stay in there and drink till he turns into a rum keg, for all I care. If he comes out here and starts giving orders, we'll have to take action. Otherwise, I say let him be. He can only drink so much, then he'll pass out. Yeah, I don't get it. The crew says he took one look at the stowaway and turned green. They thought he's going to have a fit. Block says he'd never seen a man shrivel up with fear like that. Who is the bird, anyway? I don't know. Evidently, they used to know each other. Evidently, they could... Take the bridge. Put all hands. Break out those hoses. Don't stand there. You want to be blown to kingdom come? All hands forward. All hands forward. Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Cole McDonald in the proudly we hailed production, The Wanderer, will return in just a moment for the second act. I have a message for the young men of America. Enlist in the United States Air Force. By doing this right now, when the Air Force is expanding, you have the opportunity to really get ahead. The Air Force needs specialists in radar, radio, weather, aircraft maintenance, and numerous other technical fields. Yes, the Air Force can train you for one of its many technical jobs. Go to the nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with a recruiting sergeant and find out for yourself the advantages you can gain by enlisting in the Air Force now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Cole McDonald, we present the second act of The Wanderer.
Well, we never did find out how that fire started. Any fire on board ship is bad. A blaze on a fully loaded tanker is pure hell. It pumps flaming terror into the heart. It takes pure raw guts to stand on the heated deck of a monstrous time bomb and squirt ineffectual streams of chemicals into an inferno. Some men have that kind of courage, others don't. Mac! Some of the port watch are making for the boat! Get them back on those boats. Get them on the hoses. You've got a gun, use it if you have to. It's no good, Mac. We got to get off. She's gonna blow sure as fate. Have you seen the captain? No, I think he's still in his cabin. All right, get back to your men. Keep them out of the boats. I'll get the command to abandon this ship. No one leaves before that. Yeah, yeah. What is it, Block? We can't hold her, sir. She started to move back if she reaches the cargo. Have you flooded the port hole? Yes, sir. No good. All right, start flooding the main hole. The main, sir. You hurt me. Get at it. Block, wait. Where's the stowaway? I don't know, sir. He... Well, I guess he's still below. Tell the second he's in command till I get back. But, sir, what... I went down down into the ship and the smoke. Thick and oily came along, choking, choking me. I stumbled on through its suffocating folds until I reached the cramped quarters where he'd been held. <coughs> hey, hey, it's all right, man. <coughs> I'll have you out in a second. Hold on. It was then I noticed the bulkhead door was swinging open. I wasted precious seconds, swearing and fuming in the knowledge that I'd left the deck to come down and free a man who'd already been set free. I made my way aft where the smoke was not so thick and climbed back up onto the deck. Well, I could see at a glance that we'd lost the uneven fight. If we wanted to live, we had to get off the sparrow and fast. Prepare to abandon ship. Leave the hoses. Get to your boat stations. All hands, abandon ship. Mac, Mac, what happened? Where you been? Where's the stowaway? Don't, well, I haven't seen him. He must be... No, no, he's not. I just came from there. How about the captain? He's still up there. Come on, we got to get to him. Abandon ship. Get your boats in the water. What are you waiting for? Come on, Captain. Open up or we'll break it down. Come on, snap out of it. Here, give me that axe. He's got the screaming memes. Stand back. That won't be necessary, Mr. McDonald. You, what the devil goes on here? Put down that gun. Mr. McDonald and you, sir. I think you'd better get off in a hurry. She's going to blow up any minute. What are you going to do, stay here and blow up with her? I'm going to keep the captain company. He's mad. I'm coming in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been hit before any number of times, but nothing in this world ever hit me quite so hard as his fist. I was out before I hit the deck and went sprawling down the companionway. Well, I came to in one of the boats, the last boat to leave the ship. I sat up groggily, and as we pulled strongly away from the burning sparrow... I saw great towers of flame shot up through the black mushrooming clouds of smoke. She was afire from deck to waterline, but my eyes were glued to the door of the captain's cabin just after the bridge. I don't know what I expected to see, but suddenly the door was flung open, and I saw Anders leap through the entrance and start for the rail. But before he could reach it, the wanderer came from behind and grabbed him fast. For an instant or for an eternity, they stood locked together, the flames licking upward about them. Two figures struggling on the brink of Dante's Inferno. A cloud of black smoke blotted them out. And then the sparrow blew. Well, you might have thought that was the end of it. But that's what I thought when we were picked up two days later. As for Captain Anders, a court of inquiry handed down the verdict of death by a person unknown for reasons unknown. The newspapers, of course, made a big play of it. It was a story to stimulate the imagination. None of the crew admitted setting the stowaway free when the ship caught fire. So an added touch of mystery was thrown in. I was willing to leave it at that, but something within me was not. Often I'd find myself going back, back over the conversations I'd had with both men on the long night watch with the wind wailing its dirge through the superstructure and the ship heeling over the forces of the sea, I'd hear again the calm voice of the man I called the Wanderer. I'd hear Captain Anders shouting wildly, and I'd see the terror in his small, haunted eyes. 
What was there about the whole thing that would not let me rest? What was there about the wanderer, not like other men? It was over a year later that I found the answer in a Dublin bar quite by accident. Willie, I'm glad I ran into you. Hey, it's been a long, long time between beers. Oh, I bet you make me cry. When I think of those days, the great convoys, the run to Murmansk, one torpedo and burr. And now look. Look at everything. Better to look in your beer, will Yeah, you? yeah. Better to let the sieve in blow the thoughts from the head. You know, I hear about you. I hear about when your ship go poof. <laughs> she went poof, all right. Yeah, just like in the old days. Your captain, he go down with the ship? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Did you read about him, too? I was more interested in Cole McDonald. I hear some crazy story. You got no place to go, you, you tell me? Well, you, um... You get us four more bears, and I'll tell you. Yeah, that is good. And so I told my old shipmate, Willie Linfors, the whole story. When I was through, I was dry, and I drained my beer before I noticed his reaction. He was staring at me. There was a look on his face, a look of disbelief, and behind that, fear. In the dim, smoky light, I noticed his knuckles were white over his clenched fists. Yeah. Yeah, I know, it's quite a yarn, but it's true, all of it. You... You don't understand. It can't be true. I tell you, Mac, it can't be true. Oh, you've got a snootful, Willie. I just got through telling you what happened. You don't think I made it up. No. No, you couldn't do that, Mac. Mac, I knew those two men, both of them. Your description. There could be no two others just like that, could there? Could there, Mac? Well, I, I, I don't know, Willie. But what about them? Who were they? I've been wondering for a long time. They, they came from my village. This Captain Anders with the scar, his, his real name was Alborg. And the other, the other was Carl Saunders. Oh, oh, and I guess they didn't like each other very much. No, eh? you mustn't interrupt. I must tell you this. Back, back when Denmark was first invaded, Carl started an underground group. He ran arms in from England. It was very dangerous. Carl had a wife, Karen. She was lovely. They had two children, Hans and Lisa. Alborg, he was a big man in the village. Captain. He, he hated Carl because he wanted Karen for himself. He informed to the Germans. One, one night they came. It was snowing and the wind crying. They made everyone get up. Then they brought out Carl's wife and the two children. And, and they shot them there in front of us. Good God. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm not finished. Alborg was there too. The German commandant told us Alborg was the informer. He did it to show us we could not trust our own people. If we could have gotten to Alborg, we would have torn him to bits with our hands. The Germans kept him from us. Before they took him away, Carl... Was... Carl? Carl, you mean, you mean he was there, too? Yes. They made him watch while they shot his family. Oh, for the love of... Carl stood between two guards. His clothes were torn. He had been beaten badly. But he stood like a man. And as long as I live, I'll never forget his voice and the way he looked with his wife and children lying in the snow in front of him. Salvador! I'll get you. I'll come back and drag you down the hill. I'll not rest till I've found you. Halberd! The curse of the devil on you! Well, he kept his word, didn't he? And who can blame him? Yeah. But how did he keep it? How could he keep it? Oh, what do you mean? Do you think the Germans let him go? They shot him down. Just like they did his wife and children. What? Huh? But that can't be, Willie. I know. But I helped to bury him. I was there. I know. I didn't dream it. Now tell me we are both mad. Hmm. 
Willie. You know what I think? What? I think we better have a drink. From out of the sea and from out of the men who follow it have come tales both strange and unexplainable. Tales that bear a timelessness like the inevitable and constant surf that forever beats against a million miles of shore. Our star, Conrad Nagel, will return with a word about next week's show in just a moment. You Air Force veterans listening to our show... When you hear the sound of planes in the air or a flight of Air Force planes winging through the sky, doesn't it make you a little bit homesick? Well, if it does, here's some good news for you. For you veterans with experience and special training are needed now. You can enlist with your old grade or better. Skip basic training and be assigned initially to a nearby Air Force base. And this deal holds good for veterans of other branches of the service, too, if they've had the kind of special training the Air Force needs. If you've had training and experience in such fields as radio, radar, maintenance, weather, armament, photography, and many others, you can build a fine future in our fast-growing Air Force. But why not get all the facts? Just stop at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and find out where you are needed in the world's greatest Air Force. Enlist now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. The Wanderer was written by DeWitt Kopp. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Production and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. We hope you'll join us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail. Our play takes us to the southwestern United States for a tale of three desperate men and a desert chase entitled The Desert's Edge. Until then, goodbye. (laughs) 